So this is the arcade machine I built. Uh, I bought this off Craigslist, uh, originally as a Street Fighter 2 turbo machine, which was all broken and rusted. Uh, here's a picture of it. As you can see, it wasn't much before, but uh, now it is a fully playable arcade machine. So I'm just going to describe some of the changes I made. First thing you'll notice is I replaced the monitor inside, so I no longer have a CRT. I replaced it with an LCD, which is much lighter. Um, I've also put the uh, the T molding at the sides, which used to be black, I've now changed it into blue, and I've painted the entire thing black, giving it a better color scheme. I added a side panel sticker, a front top marquee, and a uh, control panel sticker. Uh, I also drilled in these side buttons here. These weren't originally in here. Uh, these were to uh, be used for like pinball games, but you can also use them for any other game. The control panel here, I've uh, drilled in uh, these two extra black buttons. Uh, they weren't originally here and it's just some more buttons for you to use. Uh, replace the sticks with these analog sticks. Uh, they provide a much wider variety for the types of games that are going to be being played on this. Uh, then you've got these buttons here which I put in as emulator buttons. So we've got rewind, fast forward, save state, load state, pause game. Uh, got a keyboard here in case you need to use any other features which uh, this setup here doesn't allow. Uh, the keyboard is actually wireless as well, so you can take it off and it's velcroed on. And to power it, it's got a built-in battery, but if the battery ever dies, you've got your charging cable, which you can just plug in right here. Got your uh, volume control here, power on and off, and volume up and down. And that can be done separately from, without having to uh, go through the Windows control panel. Um, just under the mark here, you'll see I've got some old computer speakers here that are just double-sided taped on. Uh, and that is actually the power button, which I've put right in the ceiling there. And uh, this light here has been spliced in with the power supply, and that actually is going to light up when you turn the computer on and make this look actually pretty good, this top marquee here. Coming around to the back, uh, you'll see the LCD monitor has been mounted uh, using the old joystick boxes here. My friend Seth came up with that idea um, just to hold the LCD in place there and it's pretty sturdy. Um, these are the cables that are going up top. I got the original power switches in here but it's not connected to anything. But I left it in there in case I want to add it, something in the future. Uh, this is the IPAC board and this is the board that uh, connects all the wires that I have over to uh, my computer through a USB port there. Uh, if you look here I've got the stand and manual as well for the LCD monitor in case you ever wanted to take that out. So I'm just going to go on the insides of the control panel now. So this actually clips into place and I just have it unhooked for the purpose of this video. And uh, got some clips in here and that allows you to open up the panel. And as you can see I've got my joysticks wired here and uh, all my buttons. And for the buttons what I've done is I've just daisy chained the grounds here. Again, my friend Seth helped me with all the wiring, uh, and each of these wires is going into that board. This is actually Cat5 cable wiring, so it's pretty common, and you get eight wires per cable, so and it works fine. Let me just close this up here. Slide this one. Uh, where's my flashlight? Okay, got my flashlight, so I can show you now. Um, this is the original coin mechanism. I don't have it hooked up, but the wiring is there if I wanted to. I just can't see myself putting quarters down there at all ever uh, when I've got all those buttons at the top. Uh, I've taken out the locking bracket at the side uh, to make it a little lighter and so I can open it up and get on the internals of the computer. So here I've got um, here I've got two Xbox controllers and these are basically 
going to let you play the console in case you don't want to use you know the arcade controls you can use those old classic controls I got some spare parts here uh, the computer itself uh, the computer is a Dell uh, I would never recommend a Dell for anyone for a project like this because like as you can see the hard drive sticking out there didn't even have standard connections I had to like sort of forcefully get that hard drive in there and for the power switch I had to actually solder wires onto the board itself uh, because there's like the jumper settings just don't work on the on these boards um, we've got the speaker subwoofer here and some spare paint here so that's it for the insides and uh, let me go ahead and turn this on so it lights up a bit it's kinda of bright in here so I guess you can't really see it uh, speakers TV turn on and now it takes about a minute to load uh, it's running. It's going to be running uh, Hyperspin. That's a front end uh, emulator. Um, sorry, it's a it's a front end for uh, all the games that are going to be being played on here, and it runs different emulators. So it can do uh, you know Nintendo, Sega, all those classic systems, and then it can also do uh, Mame, and uh, it can even run PC games really. So. Uh, once this loads up, it just loads right into Hyperspin. See the loading screen here. And just wait for it to load. Hyperspin. After it's done loading, uh, it pops up with its preview videos, but it's still loading the computer now, so it's still going to be like another 20 seconds before it loads. You can hear the sound is a bit choppy, but as soon as it levels out, you know it's loaded. There you go. So now if we take a look, you can see that I can select uh, various games and systems here. So you got all your classic systems, uh, probably a bunch of stuff I've never even heard of I've got on here. Uh, and, you know, I got all my classics and favorites. So if we just go to Super Nintendo here, you'll see there's also a picture and preview video of every game. So if you've never played any of these games before, this is an easy way to like see what might look good before you try it. Uh, you can search by letter, uh, you can skip, or you can use a favorites list. So. Let's just go to Contra 3 here. This is one of my favorites. And to skip loading, I can use my emulator button here. Fast forward. So as you can see, uh, it's just as you normally would be playing a game pretty good. It's kind of hard to play with one hand here, but yeah, you get the picture. Uh, so to get out of the game, all I'm going to do is hold shift and push the pause button. And that brings me back to the system select screen. And then from here I can just go back and select a different system. So that's uh, basically my arcade machine.